We know that many people with severe mental illness and substance abuse disorders have difficulty with housing. You see across the nation so many people that are living on the streets. So what Central Florida does is we provide services, overlay services and supports, case management, people to come in and help people learn life skills so that they can successfully transition from the street to a home. A wonderful example of a supported housing program supported by Central Florida Behavioral Health Network. We started with a 30-bed uh, licensed assisted living facility for people that have a uh, mental health diagnosis and need a very high level of support. We see a lot of people who have slipped through the cracks in the past. When we get these referrals, people have been through the gamut. Um, a lot of them have had pretty negative experiences with housing. They can come in like from a shelter and they have nothing. They may just have, you know, the, the sobriety time. You know, they've been homeless and then, you know, they move in. We realized that there was a, a tremendous need for uh, supportive housing, so we branched out uh, into uh, buying some apartment buildings in uh, early 2000, and as they say, the rest is history. I'm very grateful that there's a program like this, like Castle, to, uh, you know, back people if they're in need. Well, most importantly, I got a roof over my head, which is important, because I didn't know what I was going to do when I was in the shelter. We make sure that people are always living at the lowest level of care. So in the past, people have sometimes gone to a higher level of care than is necessary, or, you know, sometimes in a lower level of care, and then they kind of fall between and fall through the cracks. Um, so we're able to help people who just need a little bit of support, and there are so many people out there like that. Having my rent affordable, allows me to live, you know, it allows me to kind of live like a human being, you know, and that's so important. Some people I help with um, grocery shopping and helping them look for deals in the store and managing their money appropriately. Some people need help just with simple budgeting to make their money stretch throughout the month. One client the other day, um, he's actually waiting on a knee replacement and um, we were shopping together as a team but now he's progressed and now he's shopping independently and when I say shopping like Walmart shopping, um, grocery shopping, um, he's able to check out by himself whereas before I was having to assist him with those things. Being able to just have a safe nice place to live too because some of the people that we've taken in from other places they've not been housed in nice places so they're very excited to be in a nice home with nice neighbors, residents, um, that they, they feel safe. One of the challenges for people that are low income and disabled is transportation. It is a major stumbling point. Oh, they take us to the doctor, they take us grocery shopping, appointments like that which helps a lot because sometimes on the bus it's hard to find doctor's offices and stuff. Well, we have three minivans. Uh, whenever the clients uh, need, if they have appointments, we always ask that they let the case managers know at least a week in advance for any doctor's appointments, be it with a psychiatrist or a uh, primary care physician. So that way that uh, we can get everything scheduled. The folks that go into the houses, and they're incredible people, uh, they work with them on scheduling, on when they're gonna do things. So they're not doing this for the individual in the home that we're serving. They do it with them. It's a team approach. There is no hierarchy. They're, they're in it together. In my opinion, and from the opinion of my colleagues in the five counties that we are currently operating, the managing entity, which is for our area, Central Florida Bay Buff Network, has the, the best handle, the, the, the best grasp on mental health and substance use policy and needs in each individual county. And they provide funding to different agencies such as mine, uh, which is crucial uh, to our success and to our operation. Mm -hmm. 
the outcomes that the agency is generating by people staying out of the hospitals and uh, out of the acute care system and out of the jails uh, is proof that the model works. The results that I'm proud of with the organization is that we, one, can house the mentally ill community and substance abuse, along with making an understanding together that we can build a relationship with them to get them back on their feet, to know that they can live an independent life even though they have an illness. I'm at a place now in my recovery where I'm pretty much happy, joyous, and free. That's the best part of the job. Just to see the, the smiles and to see the, that they're not going to be on the streets. Just to see that they want a second chance in life. You know, they want to see something different. They don't want to go back to where they were. And then there are a lot of people who do have diagnoses of mental um, illness who um, need this type of setting. Um, really, we just provide a little bit of support and that allows people to thrive. Some of the clients, they feel independent enough to where they would, they would give us like a 30 day notice and say, hey, you know what? You all helped me get back on my feet. You all helped me to have more confidence in myself. I love it here, but you know what? I'm gonna move on someplace else. And um, you know, I look at that as, that, that's, that's a win-win for both of us. I think the results that speak the loudest are people staying off the streets. Are, do they have a home? Do they have their dignity? Are they staying out of the jails? Are they staying out of the CSUs? To me, those results speak loudly. Having a home to live in is one of the most important factors to recovery with mental health and substance abuse and for all our lives. <laughs>